Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Pulp Crazy. I'm your host, Jason Aiken. In this week's episode, I'll be discussing a recently published comic book that was promoted as having some pulp themes. The title of this particular issue is The Multiversity, The Society of Superheroes, Conquerors from the Counter World. It was written by Grant Morrison and penciled by Chris Sprouse and published by DC Comics. This issue is part of what is called the Multiversity Project. It's a limited series made up of different one-shot issues with two bookends. So far, only the prologue and this issue have been published. The Multiversity carries on the tradition of Crisis on Infinite Earths and deals with the post-New 52 DC Multiverse. It also fits into Grant Morrison's larger body of work within the DC Universe itself. I'm a fan of Grant Morrison, but I have to admit I don't exactly get everything he does. I'm more of a fan of his straightforward stuff, such as All-Star Superman and his Batman run, rather than, say, Final Crisis. I found myself really digging this one-shot, though, as both a single issue and for it being a part of the greater Multiversity Project series. This particular issue was promoted as taking place with familiar DC heroes, but on an alternate Earth that is more in a pulp style. I think the cover does a decent job of depicting that, too. In my opinion, this issue can be read as a one-shot if you're looking for a story intended to be done in a pulp style. You don't really need to know any motivations or backstory regarding the multiversity event or anything like that. To break the plot down to the bare bones, one parallel Earth is invading another, which results in a war that lasts five years between the two Earths. The pulp style Earth featured in this story is designated as Earth 20. The featured heroes from this particular Earth are Doc Fate, who's the leader. There's Lady Blackhawk and her Blackhawks, the Immortal Man, Abin Sir, the Green Lantern, and Al Pratt, the Atom. Together, they are the Society of Superheroes. Although Earth 2 is depicted in the style of the 30s and 40s, it's meant to take place in modern times. The would-be conquerors from Earth 40 feature villainous counterparts of the Society of Superheroes. They include Dr. Faust, Lady Shiva, Vandal Savage, who's their leader, Count Sinestro, and Blockbuster. This group is known as the Society of Supervillains. Some of the pulp elements include the New York City landscape being akin to the 30s and 40s, as well as the style of the automobiles. It also appears radio may still be the big entertainment medium. Signs for V radio are pretty prominent. I presume this is the major radio station in this universe. There is also a black windowless skyscraper in the middle of Manhattan that is this universe's equivalent of the Empire State Building. It's where Doc Fate has his headquarters, much like how Doc Savage's headquarters is in the Empire State Building. In this story, Doc Fate is a two-fisted pistol-packing version of DC's mainstream Dr. Fate character. He doesn't rely on magic like his mainstream counterpart, but he is the planet's most brilliant and original mind. He also has what he calls an electro-rehabilitation program, which is another nod to Doc Savage, 
or Doc Savage's Crime College, to be more precise. I didn't find the Immortal Man to be very pulpy. Other than them showing he was an adventurer, uh, overall this depiction of him didn't impress me very much. He was basically there so Vandal Savage could fight someone. Lady Blackhawk and her Blackhawks are kind of built in the Air Ace pulp mold already. So they were pretty cool in this, and I think they made a great transition to a more pulpy style because they were basically already there. And they do get a nice air battle scene in this issue. Al Pratt is the Mighty Adam. He's a good choice for a pulp style story, given his look. In this story, he also makes a reference to Iron Monroe, who... In the DC Comics mainstream continuity is the illegitimate son of Hugo Danner. Hugo Danner is the main character from Philip Wiley's pulp era novel titled Gladiator. I thought that was a nice touch. Abin Sir is the Green Lantern in this universe, although his appearance, well his costume anyway, is more similar to the Golden Age Green Lantern. Alan Scott's. The big question is whether or not this book lived up to the promise of being pulpy. I think it did, as much as it could in order to tell this particular story anyway. There were flying robots, zombies, and the already mentioned air battle. The character lineup was okay. But I think given the theme Morrison was going for, he didn't have a whole lot of wiggle room for who to include and who to feature, since the heroes from Earth-20 had to have evil counterparts similar to them on Earth-40. Doc Fate and Dr. Faust, the Atom, Blockbuster, Lady Blackhawk, Lady Shiva, Obensor, Count Sinestro. The Immortal Man, Vandal Savage. I would have loved to see more of DC's pulpy stable in this, though. Midnight, a spirit-type character created by Jack Cole in the Golden Age, comes to mind. Roy Thomas revived him in the Secret Origin series, and I really enjoyed that particular story. He was a mass crime fighter who was also an old-time radio actor. I would have loved to see him involved in this, especially with V Radio signs being featured in New York City. Maybe he could have been employed by V Radio in some capacity. I also think Wesley Dodds, the Golden Age Sandman, would also have been a great choice for the look of the character alone. He would make a great stand-in for the Shadow. For a Jungle Lord character, I would have brought in a version of Catman. Gail Simone really beefed him up, no pun intended, in her Secret Six series, and played up the feralness of the character. He would have made a fine stand-in for Tarzan. While Batman is the most pulp-like character in the DC library, I'm glad he wasn't included in this issue. Seeing a pulp version of Batman might bring flashbacks to DC's critically panned First Wave series from a few years back. And yes, this issue was much better than anything connected to First Wave. Morrison is a great writer, and I think Chris Browse was a great choice to pencil this. His work with Alan Moore on Tom Strong really made him a no-brainer to tell a pulpy, Golden Age-style story like this. If you're curious, check this out at your local comic shop or on Comixology. Sadly, it does have a $4.99 cover price. This issue didn't seem much longer than a regular comic. I suspect the extra dollar is due to it being a part of the multiversity event. I've heard that some of these worlds that are visited during the multiversity project may have future stories told on them. If they came out with a pulp style Earth 20 series, I would definitely give that a shot and pick it up. 
Well, that's it for this week's episode. Pulp Crazy is located at pulpcrazy.com. I'm at Pulp Crazy on Twitter and facebook.com slash pulpcrazy. My YouTube channel is located at youtube.com slash pulpcast. You can also email me at pulpcrazy at gmail.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.